I'm going to make a quick video on some of my thoughts on the new uh, Pixel C convertible tablet that Google designed, manufactured, and is now selling on their website and soon to select retailers. The Pixel C doesn't compete with the iPad Pro or the Surface 4. It competes with the iPad Air 2 and Surface 3. This is the 10 inch tablet space, so that's really what we should compare uh, this tablet to. I'm only going to compare Wi-Fi models as their prices and specs are the most comparable and uh, you can see the statistics on the screen for all three tablets uh, briefly here if you'd like and you can pause the video if you want to stare at these longer. So let me do a little comparisons real quick based on the dimensions and screen aspects. So compared to the iPad Air 2, Google's Pixel C tablet is 2.3% taller, 6% wider, 11% thicker, 15% heavier, has a 5% larger screen, but has 32% more pixels on screen, and 14% higher pixel density, or PPI, and 18% more battery. Now, the larger battery won't necessarily translate into better, better battery life, but as a stock Android device using Marshmallow, the latest version of Android, the battery life and stand time, standby time with the Doze feature that is in Marshmallow should be pretty good. I have a Nexus 9, for example, and the endurance and standby times are really good for that in, in my experience. So some notable differences are as follows. The iPad Air 2 has no 32 gigabyte version. It has, uh, it has only 16, uh, 64, and uh, 128 gig versions. The Pixel C has no 16 gigabit, gigabyte or 128 gigabyte version. It only has 32 and 64 gigabyte models. The Pixel C also has no cellular version, uh, whereas uh, the Surface 3 and uh, the iPad Air 2 both have uh, models with LTE as options. The Pixel C comes with a charger that has an undetachable USB-C cable that's used only to charge this tablet or other devices that use USB-C as a connector. Neither the Pixel C nor Surface 3 come with a fingerprint scanner. Now, speaking of the Surface 3, compared to it, the Pixel C is 10% shorter, 4% not, not, as wide, not, not as wide, I guess, 25% uh, thinner, 21% lighter, has a 6% smaller screen, but 46% more pixels. It also has a 31% higher pixel density, or PPI, and 257% more battery. That's because the Surface 3 has only a 3500 milliamp battery. Um, as far as I understand, battery results from what I've seen online indicate the Surface 3 has pretty good battery life despite the small battery. But I personally think that's due to probably sleep mode and maybe aggressive timings for it, you know, falling asleep and maybe even hibernation mode active by default. I'm not sure. So there are keyboard options for the iPad Air 2 and the Surface 3 just like it is with the Pixel C. And in case you didn't know, the C means convertible. So here are their prices. So Google's Pixel C keyboard is $149. IPad, uh, Apple uh, has, well, the iPad Air 2 does have some different keyboard options, but the most popular one is the one by third-party manufacturer Logitech, and that is $99. The Surface 3, the, the keyboard that it has, is made by Microsoft, and that's at $129. So the downside here with the Pixel C is there's no trackpad uh, on the keyboard. Now, I think this would be a good time for someone like Logitech or other third parties to make their own Pixel C keyboard and include a trackpad because Android does support them. The good news is if you do have a Bluetooth keyboard and it has a trackpad on it or you use a mouse, the pointer will appear on screen when you move the mouse or when you use the uh, pointer on the trackpad there. So those all work just fine and, uh, and I've used them before on Android. So the instructions on how to use the optional keyboard for the Pixel C is not in the Pixel C box itself. Uh, there's a tips and tricks card that comes with the keyboard that you buy when you get it separately. And that shows you how to use a keyboard with the tablet. And also there are enough pictures online where you can pretty much figure out how to do that. But on the, uh, the little card, it has four pictures in each language and there's no way to miss how to actually use this keyboard with the uh, attachment. The reason why I mention it is a couple at least one video that I've seen online, the, the complaint was they don't, if you don't know how to use it or if no one shows you, you won't know, know how to use it, but it comes with the keyboard, this little card. So anyways, 
One interesting note with the Pixel C keyboard is that stand allows you to put the tablet in either landscape mode or portrait mode, and that's something you can't do with the Surface uh, 3 and Microsoft's keyboard with that. And the Logitech keyboard that goes with Apple's iPad, 2, iPad Air 2 also doesn't do that. But there are some portrait mode keyboard accessories for the iPad Air 2 that you'd have to look out for. So, Now, the major criticism that I've seen of the Pixel C has more to do with its software. For example, um, there's no split screen. That would be something that you'd want on this tablet as a minimum. For example, Samsung has been doing that for well over a year, maybe two years, if, if not more, on their tab. Uh, uh, lines and uh, in my opinion I think in the future Android should have the ability to use windowed apps because all the Android apps can be used for all the different resolutions you know so I don't think it would be too hard to have the operating system have the ability to use different windows so um, and that would allow for a better you know desktop experience so and better multitasking so more apps need to be tablet optimized too, and that's all been a long standing complaint with Android as an operating system it itself. Now, one thing of note the black bottom bar, I forget what you call it, that where the back and home uh, buttons are, and the navigate, you know, you have the navigation buttons. Um, uh, on this, on most tablets and smartphones, normally it's in the middle, those buttons are in the middle. But on this, you actually have the back and home navigate, home and back navigation buttons on the side and the task switcher, the one that allows you to switch between different apps is, is on the right uh, and that's either in portrait or landscape orientation with or without the keyboard attached. Now this wasn't visible in the pre-launch video or anywhere else that I've seen but in the recent videos where these, this has been unboxed and shown on screen uh, it's, it's quite evident. Now while the tablet does make use of a high resolution and the screen size to put more icon and text on the desktop and in the applications. Keep in mind, a tablet of this size, barely 10 inches, is not destined to be a high productivity device. Even the Surface 3 with all of its apps is relatively limited in terms of productivity when compared to a full-fledged notebook uh, or desktop uh, PC or a workstation you know, with uh, one or more full-size monitors and, and a full-size keyboard and all that kind of stuff. But to be fair, the Surface 3 will be able to take advantage of a much higher number of total apps on the Windows platform than iOS, Mac OS, Android, and Chrome OS combined. So that's no slouch. So you can't do necessarily high, high quality games and video rendering will be relatively slow, but the Surface 3 isn't anything to laugh at, particularly if you get the version with 4 gigs of RAM and 128 gigs of, of storage, in my opinion. That would be the optimal one to get. Anyways, back to the Pixel C. There are some reports that I've seen in, in more than a couple videos of lag in terms of touching the screen and getting a response out of it. So responsiveness is, is, is a little bit of an issue with this, you know, on day one. So we're going to see how that turns out. Um, also some apps um, open automatically in portrait mode. So if you have it in landscape mode, some apps just open up for some reason in portrait mode. Now that's something I've been able to avoid because I've been using an app called Rotate, which I think there's a free version. And there's like a one or two dollar version of this app, which um, allows you to force automatic rotation on on all apps. So I think that may be an option for eliminating this issue with the Pixel C. But I have yet to see anyone comment on this online, outside of myself. So we'll see how that goes. I've had that app since 2012, and it's been great. Well worth the one or two bucks that I spent for it back then. I've, I've been able to use it on every Android device since then. The screen is at least 500 nits. And what I've seen online, it's reported to be able to reach very high brightness levels. The Pixel C is likely the best Android tablet out there, but at a price. At $500 or $600 respectively, not including the $150 keyboard, for most people this would have to be an investment in terms of, of this money, not an impulse buy. I'm not really seeing reviews online with the tablet oriented in portrait mode, but given its relative width, using its aspect ratio that is identical to A4 paper, you know, it's relatively wide in portrait mode, uh, it's probably pretty good in that orientation. So that's basically my quick and uh, dirty, uh, not review, but first thoughts of looking at it online. I'm considering getting this tablet myself, not for Christmas, but likely for my birthday in February, and uh, we'll just see how it goes. So anyways, thank you very much for watching, and have a great day.